Hi, I'm Graham, and welcome to Man vs. Film. This is going to be a movie review for Triple X3, The Return of Xander Cage. It's an action movie, it's the start of January, I'm going to go and see anything anyway, so I went to see Triple X3. Now, to be fair, my expectations were very low on this one. It looked silly, ridiculous, ludicrous. You know, you've got a guy skiing down a forest, you've got somebody motorbiking across the ocean, it just looked silly. So I, I put my expectations as low as they could possibly be and just fingers crossed that I was going to find something that was just fun. Full of silly action, but fun. And even on that, I was disappointed by this movie. It, well, there's lots of things that are wrong with it, but let's get started with the plot. The main plot is about Gibbons, the Samuel L. Jackson character that brought Xander Cage into the Triple X program. He is killed and they call on Xander Cage to come and help find out who killed him. Stop this mad plot to bring satellites down, use satellites as weapons. It's a special computer that can control them and that's it. Get the computer, stop the people who are extreme sports type people as well. And that's the basic plot. Now, do you guys know of Asylum, the kind of movie makers that make Transmorphers when Transformers is coming out, or Snakes on a Train when Snakes on a Plane's coming out? Because this feels like they've made a rip-off of Fast and the Furious. It's that kind of weird aesthetic. The movies, as, it, as the movie starts out, it almost feels like a self-parody. It is ridiculous and ludicrous to an insane proportion that I just was not prepared for this level of self-mocking almost, as, or that's what it felt like. It brings in all these characters and it feels like it's trying to get that Fast Five kind of vibe. The only thing is, is those characters were far more interesting and they had a few movies in which to build them up. This just throws them all in and goes, aren't they cool? Well, no, they're not really cool. Vin Diesel is playing Vin Diesel in this Vin Diesel movie about Vin Diesel and how cool he really is, or is supposed to be in this movie. And the other characters are kind of alright, you know, kind of like aspects of them, but most of the time they're just silly and no use to the actual plot of the movie. But, you know, you're kind of hoping that they're going to have good chemistry, which they kind of do, but again, it's still not that great, it's still not that interesting. The plot itself is kind of pointless, meaningless. There's a MacGuffin, it's going to end the world, they have to stop it, blah, blah, blah. The one shining aspect of this movie is Donnie Yen. Donnie Yen is great. He looks apart. He's one of my favourite action stars from way back in the Once Upon a Time in China series and even more so Iron Monkey which is one of my favourites. And he steals this movie completely. It's almost as if they got an adolescent teenage boy to write a script of what he would like to see in a movie and this is what he came out with because it feels that daft and ludicrous. At one point Xander Cage decides to get his team together, the team that he wants to use, and he has a woman who's a sharpshooter, so he needs her, he needs a guy who's a stunt driver to get away, and then there's this third guy whose key skill seems to be partying. You know, it, it, it's as daft as it sounds. In one scene, there is somebody who has a knife who's going to, we think, stab Xander Cage or something like that. And this little guy who's a, a partier jumps up on the stage, hits the button on the DJ set and it just fills the dance floor and that stops the guy from getting to Xander Cage. It's got no tension, no excitement, it's just as daft as it sounds. At one point he utters the immortal line, I'm not a soldier, I'm a baller. Okay. And that's just an example of some of the silliness that goes through the rest of this movie. They're given these lines that make no sense and if they say it in such a way and then stand back and pose, that's what it seems like in every scene and it just looks silly. Whereas some of the action set pieces can start to get a little bit fun and a little bit inventive, then they just kind of fall flat and become CGI mess. And really, honestly, kind of boring. Overall, I really didn't like Triple X, The Return of Xander Cage. In fact, I downright hated it. I was bored. I had my head in my hands a few times during this movie, just shaking my head in disbelief about what I was seeing on screen. It is pointless. It is no good. I had no fun with it at all. But I have spoken to people who did enjoy it, so, you know, take my opinion with a pinch of salt. But possibly the most 
calculated part of the movie, the thing that really just niggled on me was how they're seeing this as a property to sell. And by looking at it like that way, they've tried to include people from all walks of life, all the major markets they've got. Somebody from India, they've got somebody from Asia, they've got you know a couple of people from there. To sell it in these markets, it just seems manufactured and calculating rather than focusing on a plot and characters who bring something to that plot or to the story. Hopefully, this will be the last triple X we ever get to see. I've really got my fingers crossed in that. I, like I said, I just it wasn't fun. It gets one out of five from me. Did you like triple X3? Is my opinion all wrong? Let me know in the comment box below why I was wrong or why I was right, and I will see you next time on Man vs. Film.